Well, after the appointment of Sandy Olise as coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, uh, the task is now set, uh, that of qualifying Nigeria for the Nations Cup uh, in Gabon 2017. After playing the first uh, in the series of qualifiers, uh, it will be time to prepare for the second, of course, uh, against uh, Tanzania. And of course, Olise has started uh, by just penciling down uh, some of the players, one of uh, such major players. Uh, Mikel Obi uh, of Chelsea currently uh, in the preseason tournament uh, with the Blues will be part of the players that will prosecute that very crucial uh, Nations Cup uh, qualifier. It is hot sports this Saturday and of course uh, there is so much to savour when it comes to sports, entertainment and information. of the heats this Saturday with fresh sports news and incisive analysis backed by exciting visuals. Hot Sports, your unique source of sport information, education and entertainment, inimitably delivered for a hot scorching argument where no one blinks. Don't miss it. Nigeria and the Congo under-23 sides faced off in Port Harcourt on Sunday in the first leg of the third round of Rio 2016 Olympic qualifiers. The home team did all the running in the opening 45 minutes but were wasteful in front of goal first in the sixth minute when a back heel in the Congolese area found its way to Etor Daniel who shot wide left. Junior Ajay was then put in on goal not long after but with only the keeper to beat, he skied the ball over the bar. Visiting coach Claude Leroy breathed a sigh of relief when his defence then kept the match scoreless at half-time after clearing off the line. After the break though, the home team's opener arrived. Just six minutes later, Daniel ran at the byline and squared for a J to nod in an easy second. The game burst back into life as a contest when Nkunku Moise capitalised on a rebound to pull a goal back for Congo, but it was a false dawn. Still, the Congo side will be pleased to have an away goal despite losing 2-1 to Nigeria. Well, after losing out in the football event of the last Olympic Games in London, uh, another opportunity beckons on uh, Nigeria to be part of the football event at the Olympics in Rio, Brazil uh, next year. Uh, but it's as if it's a 50-50 chance now for the Nigerian male team, talking about the, the dream team and of course uh, the female team, uh, the Falcons. The Falcons with a 1-1 draw uh, at home in Abuja last weekend have a very weighty burden of proof on their shoulder as they go to Equatorial Guinea to see how they can hold on 
and uh, see how the results will just uh, help them to scale through uh, the qualifiers into the Olympics uh, next year. Also, the Dream Team, a very dicey one, uh, two, a 2-1 two victory uh, in Port Harcourt, considered very slim. And uh, they will have to do a lot of work to see how they can also uh, get the results and get the ticket uh, for the Olympic Games uh, in Rio next year. Well, on the line to address this issue and other uh, football matters uh, from the Nigerian perspective, is the Assistant Director of Communications of the Nigerian Football Federation, Nemola Olajire. Um, first, let us start with our qualification for the uh, Olympic Games coming up in Rio. Uh, if you remember, four years ago, we couldn't qualify for the football event of the Olympic Games in London. What, what, what are we doing to uh, avert a situation uh, like that? Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, Nigeria Four Federation is uh, fully aware of uh, the fact that this uh, return will uh, pose uh, challenges. And of course, we have uh, moved, you know, working uh, assiduously to ensure that our teams are, uh, uh, you know, at team victory. Uh, one of the measures was uh, the meeting between the uh, Technical committee and the uh, head coaches of the Super Falcons and the under 22 team yesterday, Nakuda. And uh, we have also, uh, you know, been able to get from the coaches uh, what level of support you require to be able to accomplish uh, the mission. Uh, the under 22 team has uh, told us clearly that uh, they are here to be to ensure that uh, the, the We should be looking at, at positively seeing the, the team at the next Olympic Games in Rio. Uh, definitely, you know, we uh, are a big football player in the world, and uh, we need not, uh, you know, counting as a situation where we miss uh, two consecutive uh, Olympic uh, men and women football tournaments. Uh, you know, it's not in our character, and it will not start now. Uh, the, the last uh, games in, uh, in London, it was very painful, and uh, this time we are putting uh, everything in place, giving us the long term to ensure that we uh, will make it there to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Demola, uh, after all the rasmatas that characterize the appointment of Sandy Ulisse as uh, the coach of the Super Eagles, uh, now, close football watchers are saying it's time for work. Uh, what, what is the situation like f uh, from the perspective of the NFF? Are we focused on qualification for Gabon 2017? Certainly, certainly. Uh, 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 the Super Eagles were not at the 2015 finals in the Cultural Union, which is another side aspect. Let me, let me just stop here and thank you, Demola, for being a part of Hotspot uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much for uh, appreciating. Thank you. Well, it's time for the main issue on Hotspot this week, and we are giving you 
a major feature uh, on the Super Eagles under Sunday Olise. The former Super Eagles keeper and now coach of the team has uh, set a standard for the team, insisting that only players uh, who have regular appearances uh, in their club sites will be invited for the national team. Uh, considering the fact that a lot of Nigerian players, even our major players, uh, do not get uh, regular playing time for their clubs, how will this be realistic? If you are not playing in the first division anywhere in the world and in Nigeria, you cannot play for the Super Eagles henceforth. Words of marble emanating from the new gaffer of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, Sunday Ogochuku Olise. The players that we are going to bring into this team, we have certain criteria that we have set out for players to play in the Super Eagles from now on. One of them is this. If you are not playing in the first division, in Nigeria, in any credible league in the world, you are not playing Super Eagles. There is only one exception to that rule, and that exception is if you are coming up from the age grades of Nigerian football. That's if you are an under 23 player, under 20, or under 17, and we know that you can serve us, that is where the exception is bent. That is where the rule is bent. That is what we are going to do. We need players who are only hungry, motivated, and proud to wear our colors. You are not doing us a favor by playing for Nigeria, just like I am not doing Nigeria a favor by coaching Nigeria. So on that basis, what I'm trying to say is that even I personally, I am not here because Nigeria is doing me a favor, but it's a honor for me to say I am coaching my country. So it is not as if uh, it's a take take no. It's a win from both sides that I'm trying to put out there. Of course, this has set tongues wagging about the effects or non-effects of that decision. Quick to note though is that underage players are exempt from the rule. In life, everything has its pros and cons. And with this, we delve into the issue of Ulysses ban on players who do not play for any top division team from the Super Eagles. For a while now, the senior national team of Nigeria have failed to inspire their Nations Cup victory in 2013, though laudable, should draw applause from all and sundry, has left many feeling it was more out of luck than ingenuity. Thus, the Super Eagles have been anything but super. It is on this premise that Sunday Olise is believed to have passed this edict that has gotten followers of the national team talking. Credit must be given to Olise for identifying some of the huge problems plaguing the national team. But professionalism or lack of it is just one of the banes of the team. While we must all agree that the best legs must play for Nigeria, but our best legs playing in the top echelons of European leagues or other leagues in the world. To play for the best teams in the world or at the highest level of any league, you must be a consummate professional and this is expected to cascade down to the national team he plays for. The word here is expected, but as we all know, it doesn't always go to script. History is replete with players who play for the best clubs and best leagues, but ended up being a pain in the side of their national teams. As good intentioned as Ulisse is for the team, coupled with his desire to succeed, we must however ask, how many of our players fall within this bracket? How many of those within this bracket play regularly for their teams? I'm not coming as a Messiah. I'm not coming as a man who knows it all. I'm not coming as someone who can singularly, alone, just turn Nigeria into Germany. But I'm coming as a man who has come to serve his country and ready to give 150% if needed. And um, I think I owe it to you to explain to you why my assistants are who they are. When we had to bring in an expatriate to serve Nigeria, one of the things I told the Honorable President was that I will not be a party of us employing an expatriate one who's going to come and have an attitude better than thou in here. We need an expatriate who's ready to work, an expatriate who's hungry for victory, an expatriate who knows Africa, who doesn't need time to acclimatize. And in fact, 
Salisu, we need him desperately because of the fact that we need somebody who knows the league in and out. Because we are, our aim is also to work with local players and also the mentality of the team. Aloyago, we need him because when they're talking of calmness and somebody who can channel the, the goalkeepers and also be, give tactical advices and technical advices to the coaches, he's also one of it. And that's why we are, we are what we are. Olise is a very intelligent man with a vast playing experience and technical new, albeit theoretically. But he may be laying for himself a double-edged sword. Maybe Olise was eager to make the right noises. He should, however, have stayed clear of the issue of player selection. It was too early in the day to broach a subject like that. The import of his declarations can be understood better when one looks at the quality of players Nigeria at this juncture possesses. A huge chunk of Nigerian players who play in the elite divisions of their leagues are non-starters or do not get regular playing time. A case in hand is that of Mikel Obi, who he has invited for the game against Tanzania. Mikel plays for Chelsea, but managed just 18 league games all season for Chelsea, of which he started just six times. Based on this declaration, players like Leon Balogun and Ojeon Igalo should not have been invited to the Super Eagles because as at the time they were invited, their teams played in the lower division. In fact, in 1993, Rashidi Yakini, Nigeria's most prolific striker, was playing his trade in the lower rungs of the Portuguese league. He played for Vitoria Setubal, where he plundered 34 goals in 32 matches, and went on to win the African Footballer of the Year. How can we imagine a Super Eagles den without Rashidi Yakini? Let's call it spade a spade. Gone are the days when we had individual players that can win matches for us out of their own individual efforts. And that's what we had during my generation. And the way life is this, if you don't have great players, you need a great technical coaching crew and you need a great national federation to compensate for what you don't have as regards these great players. But we have potential. So let's not say we don't have potential. We have potential to be the best in the world. That is what I honestly believe, and that's what my coaching crew also believe. They were meticulously chosen out, and it's not just by hazard that they're all there. Without trying to insult Ulysses' intelligence, he should understand that not all players will be lucky enough to secure contracts with top clubs. Should we now, with all their potentials, discard them for those players who consistently won benches in their so-called elite clubs? Our best legs are playing their trade in unheralded teams across the world. That is the truth before us. If Olise is truthful about there being no place for mediocrity in his team, then this is what he should understand. People might say, okay, yeah, it's Sunday, this, that, this, that, this, that. But I must be honest with you, the last time most of you saw me was 13 years ago. My son didn't have a girlfriend then. Now the, <laughs> the man is almost 20 and gradually kicking me out of my own house. So, and, uh, I'm, my, although my mother, is, my mother is in a hurry to have a grandchild, but then again, I'm saying, man, take it easy. But that shows that we're all getting old. And I think in a, in a way also, if you're going to start judging Sunday from what you read in the past, when we didn't have social media for our us to even express and tell you our own part of whatever it was that you had read in the past, you are making a big mistake because we are not coming here to fight war. We are coming here to serve our nation. There's also the case of the home base players who have received the short end of the stick in the past. Ulysses' edict must not alienate them for they truly have potentials and have something to offer. In 1990, Ulysses shouldn't forget, West Ham went to the Nations Cup with an almost entirely home base team and came home with silver. In 2013, Stephen Keshi led a team with a huge chunk of homeboys and greenhorns and conquered Africa. Finally, Ulisse must take a cue from Georgi Luis Pinto, the Colombian who coached Costa Rica at the last World Cup. He understood the inability of his team to play perpetually on the front foot and focused on exploiting specific weaknesses in the opposition. I will also be blunt in one instance that since we're among ourselves, people know that a lot has been spoken about frictions going on between the technical crew and the, and the technical committee and the that and the players and all that. Let's bear it out. I had a long 
we had long constructive discussions with them yesterday. And it went way into the night because we were enjoying it so much. Of course, there are times we will not enjoy those discussions like it was yesterday. There are times that it will be. But the basic thing there is that they made it clear to me that they were willing to stand and support us. And I made it clear to them that I was willing also to be responsible for the management of my players and my coaching staff. So that means, and the good thing there is that we mapped out everybody's own jurisprudence, where everybody has to work and where everybody doesn't, you know, everybody has their own area of specialization. And they welcomed it and we welcomed it. And we, they, eventually they presented it to the big boss himself. So the point I'm making out here is that the aim is to work together for the interest of Nigeria because I will repeat it. If we fail, they fail. Because we need them to provide us with information about our opponents, like a technical committee does. We need them to help us and tell us what, you know, provide us with information as regards the weaknesses, the scouting, and all what we need for the uh, national teams. We need them to do it, and we need it desperately. And the president, even the head of the uh, disciplinary committee also, he gave us some guidelines as regards how that he said, these are the instructions, what we feel should be the code of conduct of players. And I told him, it is good, but we even have to add more to it. Because I feel that the priority for us should be, I'll be honest with you, if you play for Nigeria as a player, it's good, you're serving Nigeria, but it improves your market value. So the point I'm stressing out is that just as it is good for us to play, the players coming have to, be, have to realize that it is also good for them to play for Nigeria. So if you do Shakara for us, no verse, the door will be closed. Olise must understand the weaknesses of the opposition, but even more so, the limitations of his. He must build a team of various characteristics. I can understand, but there is something that I think we should differentiate. There's a difference between being stubborn and being principled. And I think um, if you're stubborn without reason, then you're a madman, you're not stubborn. But if you're a principal, because for example, I refuse to smoke cigarettes and everybody around is smoking, and I know it's bad for my health, I will, I will die with that stubbornness of not smoking. Because I want my children to have their father to live long. But on the other hand also, I grew up in Europe when Europe is not as easy as it was now. I grew up also in Nigeria when Nigeria is not as buoyant as it is now. And that means we grew up at a time where we had hardship. So forget this necktie and everything. We all, saw, we all took more ways and hung out on the door. So the point I'm making, I'm trying to get at is this is that, in the first place, I'm a, I might be stubborn like you say, but I think I'm more principled and I'm even way older now. And um, I'm over 40 now. So uh, like, one of the things, I was asked a question once, do you want to coach Super Eagles? And I said, no, I want to live long. Because I know that coaching our Super Eagles is not a 24-hour job. It's a 27-hour job. Because that four hours, when you're still sleeping that 24 hours, you still have another three somewhere in this time. You know, ever since Oga told me, okay, we can work together, we've been working already. You know, look at them, they are drowsy, three of them. We didn't sleep. <laughs> you know, so it's because we know what you are expecting from us. And I know, we know that you will not accept anything less. But what I just tried to do to answer your question plainly is that we made it clear from the onset. The Federation told us this is what we expect from you and this is what we want to do. And we told them, okay. And we said, but please, if you want us to do this work for you, this is what we also expect from you. And they tabled it out and they put it into writing. So, of course, there will be times, maybe there will be frictions. There will be times that will tell me, ah, Sonny, ah, we are not winning enough. Ah, one zero, no do us. Oh, why, why did we lose to And then I said, oh, ah. Look, the kind of pitch when we play now. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, something like that, you know. But it's just like they are going to be like father figures in the way to the team. And we are going to be like stubborn children too that they also have to support. <laughs> but at the same time, we are working for them. They are employers, we are employees. So I think at one point we have to look at it like that. 
Our people they talk and say, no how when the nose won't be great when they come, you no know, fish smell them. You AC soccer laugh line, the Obonga program, where you they hear all the echetra and echetra things them will concern the world of soccer. They don't say I play that ball as God for where, oh. for my mind. As one guy won't score ball, he no score him. Mike can open my say, ah man, I for score this ball. Now if let's say talk. Say ah, if Nami I for score this ball, now they look Mike, you say wait. Mika say I for score this ball, I shut up. I feel like continue, what were you saying? You AC soccer laugh line, my name that yo. Make a catch you for TV, not in Mika. Well, that's how far we can go on Hotspots this Saturday. Uh, you can join us uh, through SMS uh, from the number you have on your screens or through a social media network and uh, just and give us your views uh, on this major issue that we have addressed today on Hotspots. And we'll be very glad to highlight it on the program. That's how far we can go on Hotspots this Saturday. We'll be back again next weekend.